Breathe on me, breath of God. Fill me with life anew, that I may love what thou dost love, and do what thou dost do. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts be acceptable to you, O God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. In our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? In our own languages, we hear them speaking. Something happened that night. Almost 22 years ago, gathered in a room with about 150 teenagers on a spiritual retreat for the weekend, something happened that night. As one of the directors for that weekend, I was attempting to lead these teenagers to Christ. And through much trial and tribulation, and at our wit's end with their teenagerism, as we gathered in that hall and we spoke from the heart and we shared our frustrations with each other, and as we sang, Blaze, Spirit, Blaze, set our hearts on fire from shine, Jesus, shine, tears and prayers began to flow. And little that we knew, the spirit would move. If not among the majority of those teenagers, certainly among us leaders, we began to listen to each other. We began to listen to God at deeper levels. It was a Pentecostal moment because through our listening, we were transformed. Personalities were healed and we began to speak a different language, the language of love and of God. Empowered by God's Holy Spirit, we were transformed. Something happened. When I graduated from seminary with youthful arrogance and energy, I knew without a doubt that with good theology, people would respond to the gospel message, they would get it right away, get to know Christ, and their lives will be transformed and changed forever. Boy, was I wrong. What I discovered sometimes with mouth agape and quite embarrassingly often, was that people had deeper needs and they could care less about good theology. It was my sense of inadequacy in helping these individuals in their trials and their circumstances that led me to study pastoral counseling at Loyola University. It was a Pentecostal moment for me. Because as I went through that program, I began to understand the language of a different culture. I began to understand the different nuances that people were speaking, though we spoke the same primary language. I began to listen to people at deeper levels. And so what I heard was not an addict, but someone who had a physiological dependence, someone who experienced trauma, someone who was hurting deep within that lacked love, that was abandoned somewhere along life's journey and could no longer take the pain. I began to see people in a different light. God's spirit was at work. Something happened. When you graciously and gratefully called me to be your priest here at St. George's, I would become the second black priest to grace your doors, defying historical trends and opening possibilities of bringing cultures and peoples of different backgrounds together. And what a diversity and what a glorious experience it has been. And though on some levels we spoke different languages, it was a Pentecostal moment as we saw the joining of cultures and peoples, and we would be challenged to listen to each other through new ways of understanding and doing ministry, God's Spirit was at work. Yes, something happened. That first night that I moved into my apartment here in Carroll County, and at 11 p.m., I was awoken to the police at my door questioning whether or not I actually lived or had broken into this apartment. A story I share not for sympathy of any kind, but for the greater message of this sermon. We must learn to listen and hear and seek to understand each other at deeper levels. 
It was a Pentecostal moment because what I heard was the plight of a people who had been put at a different level for years. What I heard was the fear and ignorance of people on the other side of the divide. And for the first time in my life, in a very direct and explicit way, I experienced the reality of racism, which only broadened my understanding of the systemic and stereotypical ways that people who are different suffer in our world because of the many isms in our society. Such an experience was not met with fear or disdain, but with sadness. It was met with concern. It was met with a need to listen more deeply to the cries of people in our world. Then I knew it was a Pentecostal moment because I was empowered by God's Spirit to know that my work among you here in Carroll County would be about liberating people from their fear and their ignorance and the stigmatization that keeps people in darkness and in suffering. It was a Pentecostal moment. God's Spirit was at work and something happened. Something happened the day the letter was sent out to the congregation asking us to respond to our debt reduction. While on a surface level, money appeared to be the issue, I believe we heard each other on a different level. It was a Pentecostal moment as the Spirit of God moved and we heard the cry and the pain of our community that somewhere more than the money issue, we were falling apart. Something was awry in our congregation and we needed to do something about it. What was going on? I believe it forced us to step back and to listen to each other. I am convinced that our debt challenge was multi-layered and we needed to understand each other at different levels. The Spirit empowered us in ways in which we stand inspired today. Something happened. It was a Pentecostal moment because through these experiences, through these encounters that I have shared with you, I have come to realize that one of our greatest needs in this world is the need to listen and to understand each other at deeper levels. Yes, something happened. Before 9 o'clock on that first Pentecost, that was to change the world forever. Something so intoxicating, so inebriating, that those who witnessed it could only describe the disciples as drunk. In a quick, electrifying, mighty rush of a wind, the disciples were engulfed, lives were transformed, the world was about to be turned upside down, and the meaning of Pentecost had been changed forever. The Spirit had come. What did this mean? That was the question those who observed began to ask. You see, in that experience, a ragged group of social misfits who fared for their lives, who stood behind locked doors, were transformed into a passionate and courageous cadre of spiritual troopers for the gospel of Christ, only to become the greatest community of faith the world has ever seen. Yes, more than two billion people in this world claim Christianity. And almost every aspect of human life, from law to medicine to humanitarian laws, have been touched or inspired or influenced by Christianity in some way. Something happened on the day of Pentecost that changed our world. Those who observed the Spirit's descent upon the apostles and heard them speak in a different language were amazed at the great outpouring. The picture is not one we are meant to miss. What happened? They understood. They heard each other. And as Bishop Knudsen reminded us at convention, only confirming my sermon for today, was that Pentecost, more than anything, was a wonderful miracle of listening and hearing each other. They understood each other in their native tongues. That old Galilean accent had gone and they were able to understand exactly what others were saying. What does this mean? It means that the new community under Christ is a multicultural, 
multilingual community, a community where all are welcomed. You see, in the Quran, you can only read the Quran in Arabic. And for the strict Jew, it must be read in Hebrew. But in this new faith, God's language of love could be understood by all. God's word could be heard by all. What does this mean? It means that if we are going to transform our community, if we are going to help bring healing to our world, if we are going to change a lot of the isms and the injustices of our society, it must begin by learning to listen to each other, by learning to understand each other at deeper levels. But the reality is, most often, we find it hard to listen. Especially when we are uncomfortable. We don't like discomfort, and that is why alcoholics and people who abuse drugs and alcohol tend to numb their feelings because they don't like the discomfort. We tend to dissociate rather than experience the need to listen. A lot of people avoid their anger passively and aggressively because they don't like the feeling it produces when they should be listening to that discomfort, listening to that anger because it's saying something maybe about setting boundaries. Maybe that something is not right in this relationship and something needs to be done about it. But instead, dear friends, we don't like to listen to those things. What transpired on that day was the fact that they were willing to listen and hear each other. Listening to the many voices of our community is the only way we can be effective. That's what the Spirit empowers us to do in one sense. It empowers us to hear what's going on in people's lives and to respond to that, even though they may be speaking a different language from you and from me. The language of addiction. The language of pain, of poverty, of sadness, of West Baltimore, of oppression. Are we listening? One of the things my wife has always invited me to do in our marriage was to listen to her love language. Because so often I got it wrong. I always thought she wanted to be loved the way I wanted to be loved. Sure. Acts of service, say one or two good things, send a card, send some flowers, when material things mean little to her, and it was all about presence and listening. But you know how we guys go, we want to fix it, we want to sh shut her up right away and move right along. Learning to listen to her love language was key to growth and transformation in our relationship. See, many a misunderstanding occurs because we don't listen to each other. Couples often say one thing and then they go on another tangent. They don't listen to each other. And until they do, they don't hear each other and healing doesn't take place. Do you want to go to the gym with me? So what are you saying? I'm fat? <laughs> no. Do you want to go to the gym with me? See, we all speak different languages. But the problem is often that we want to force people to understand our language rather than seek to understand their language. Which is why the prayer of serenity is so important in one sense. Grant me to accept the things that I cannot change. Courage to change the things that I can. And then the prayer of St. Augustine who says, help me, right? That's the part of the serenity. To understand, not so much to be understood. That's my prayer daily as I encounter people. Help me to understand, not so much as to be understood. Because I know my shortcomings. And I know that I want to get my point across. Just ask my wife. <laughs> so I challenge you this morning to begin listening. What simple thing, what one simple thing 
that you can do this week to show your spouse, to show your children, to show your students, your priest, your church, this community, our God, that you are listening, that you are seeking to understand. I wonder who in your life needs you to listen more and to talk less. It is when we hear each other and we listen to each other at deep levels that we are able to begin the work of transformation. I pray that the Spirit on this day of Pentecost will empower us all not to tune out, not to put a deaf ear to the discomforts, the things we don't like, and to keep them at bay, but to hear them, to wrestle with them, and to respond. So having heard the Spirit from on high, they were able to speak a language in which all understood. They were empowered and they transformed the community. May God open our ears to hear, not only from His Spirit on high, but from those of us below. And it is then when we hear, we can truly respond to the needs of others. For this is the lesson that I learned as a young priest, that people don't care how much I know until they know how much I care. Are you listening? Amen.